its issues. Any other questions before I move on? Nope. Okay. Human resources. Um, we have a reduction. You'll see a reduction in the human resources. We've made, again, we've made some internal changes in the way we're uh, managing our human resources within the township. So you'll see a, uh, a reduction there. We uh, have some um, plans to continue to monitor our progress. Uh, but within the, I would say within the last 30 days, we are comfortable and we feel confident that we will be able to manage uh, the department without a director of human resources. You'll see the ice rink. Expenses are not up. Um, however, the ice rink is really doing a phenomenal job. Uh, the only slight increase, again, is mostly due to uh, personnel expenses. But the majority of um, Mr. Yates's personnel are part-time people. So skating is actually doing a very good job. Revenues from the skating also remain stable and with projections to increase in 2015. They still have an outstanding revenue income for this year, don't they? Yes. Uh, information technology, you'll see a slight increase by 30, of roughly $32,000. Most of this, again, is relating to the contract uh, negotiations and the, uh, for employees. Operational expenses remain stable, actually very good uh, compared to... You said information technology would be a decrease or increase? It's an increase. Increase, okay. Increase. That's a, that's a decrease. Uh, okay. And again, uh, as I said in the opening statements, uh, information technology <laughs> eight years ago was non-existent. Um, there, there were very few computers, if anything, in the township. Uh, there was no, and when I say there was no means, uh, payroll system was pretty much an honor system. Uh, we, we've come out of the dark ages. It, it, was, it was literally um, what you have before you would become more green. So we've done an awful lot. Uh, and information technology, well, I'm not an expert, but it's even, we've even extended that into our telephone system. We have a voice over IP system, Bill, am I saying it correctly? That, uh, that can do some very sophisticated things. Uh, eight years ago, we actually had two phone systems and we never knew it. Uh, we eliminated multiple trunk lines and unused extensions. That doesn't surprise um, me. It, it literally, it, uh, there, it was a horror story, some of the things that I could tell you. Um, but we were able to save funds uh, in, the, in, in that particular department by eliminating some trunk lines and some unused extensions rather than having multiple fax lines in every office. Um, we actually have one or two per building now, so there's a sharing of um, faxes and so on and so forth. But information technology is an important tool for most communities, and we're going to do some more investment. Uh, using a variety of media and delivery, delivering consistent message are key to building a trusting a relationship with residents. We're hearing more and more about how we can get the word out. Although we've made some changes, I'm excited to talk about some other um, new initiatives that we're going to be doing. We're looking at uh, improving right now. You know, we have the cable access channel. Uh, we have, we, no, we notify residents by getting things in the newspapers. We have email, um, uh, computer, our web, website, and then we also do uh, quarterly newsletters. What uh, new initiative that we're actually starting, um, and we're hoping to have it up and running by January the 1st of this year, is a new smart app. Now, what you had before you is just a, a, a brief demonstration. Monday, uh, Friday this morning, Friday, approximately 10 o'clock, we have a task force to begin working on the development of this new smart app. This application would be free for any resident or actually even non-resident by going on to, they can have a Galaxy, they can have an iPhone, any smart device, they can download this application, it's free. And uh, we're planning on having, obviously, it would be the township and township departments would be the first thing. And one nice thing you would have is a section for residents who want to see, they want to do shopping in our township or they want to go out and have dinner in our township. We can uh, list 
all of the stores and businesses, so on and so forth. We have an area for recreation and then uh, an area for utilities. This front part of this app will eventually change. However, the bottom part are some real key things. There's a section down there for the calendar where residents literally by their phone or if they're on their smart device can go on and take a look at the calendar events of things that are going on in the township. They can report an issue to our staff by taking a picture or writing a quick note, sending us a text message. Uh, they can access immediate emergency news um, and even see weather if they wanted to. The, uh, how we believe it will cu currently look, although those people those there, people. Uh, we would have a list of all of our... They're running uh, next year. Yeah. <laughs> there will be our, uh, a list of all of our elected officials. And it will be a, a quick way for the residents um, to go on and, and select any, any one of you here. Um, get a hold of you by the phone or... Uh, I don't know if you're going to like this, but actually even send a, a quick note via email. So that would be one way to look at it. And they can access the departments. Um, here's the shop and dine. And again, that would be a section for, uh, for any of the residents. And this would be hotels. built upon. But you can actually look for stores and hotels and restaurants and so on and so forth. So it will be an opportunity for us. And I know that we've been trying to build a better relationship with our business districts. And it's an opportunity for us to get this information out at free for them at no cost. Uh, we will be one of the only, actually, once this goes up and running by January uh, or late December, we will be the only municipal government in Pennsylvania that actually has this type of uh, um, service right now. So, And the only one that doesn't have a hotel. That's right. <laughs> uh, we'll another, we'll yeah, another nice part of this is actually to highlight our recreation, and we do have phenomenal recreational activities here in our Lair community. Park is beautiful. Um, <laughs> residents can go on and look at the facilities, scroll down. They can take a look at some of the parks and trails, see the maps, get directions, and even go on and see if there's any events that's going on. Um, another big part of improvements in our information technology is we have, um, obviously we all know what's happening in Ferguson, and we have and had had cameras in our police vehicles for a number of years. We, <coughs> we upgraded our cameras a few years ago to make them all digital, so it's all digital technology. Unfortunately, once the officer leaves the, the vehicle and actually goes and has contact and not in the vicinity of their vehicle, uh, then they lose any proof of what has transpired. And so the utilization of body cameras and law enforcement is, is growing greatly. And we actually uh, have a uh, testing that's going on right now on a number of different models that our officers are using. And we're hoping to have uh, this new technology for our officers um, with uh, hopefully within the next three to four months. The good thing about it, we have most of the funding already set aside through revenues that we generated through arrest as well as drug arrest that we made in, uh, in the township as well as out, outside Haverford Township, reimbursements that we received back from um, the county. Is there any grant money for that available? Or? Uh, probably not. Unfortunately, there's, there's very little grant money is out there. There are uh, funds available in law enforcement for homeland security, but this would not fall into that category. But we believe, you know, again, it, we, we would only need enough cameras for the officers that are actually working on the streets. So it would be the same thing as they come in, they sign out their taser, um, and they would sign out the particular camera, put the body camera on, all that's recording. Some of the, I mean, the chief can actually go into this a whole lot more in depth and do it more justice than I can. At a later time, we start to talk about one of the body cameras when we get it before this board to make the purchase. But the towns that actually have this uh, technology have already saved thousands of dollars of frivolous lawsuits uh, and false claims, which unfortunately when you're in this type of work occur frequently. So getting back to um, the uh, f expenditures, um, we can take a look at uh, management. You'll see uh, that management is down uh, mostly because of legal expenses. Uh, we reduced our legal expenses. As you know, that we were we identified 
in 2014 some potential high um, uh, high, you know, high liabilities. Those have gone away, so we don't uh, we don't expect any this year. So we reduced our legal budget, and that's why you'll see there's a reduction in management. The police department, uh, you'll see an <coughs> increase. Most of that increase, if not all, that increase relates to the uh, the contractual ba uh, uh, salaries for the officers. Uh, again, the, I believe the officers, uh, like the non-uniform, get a three and a half percent increase this year. Park and recreations. You'll see park and recreations was actually down, uh, mostly because of uh, expenditure revenues. Our, our, uh, our programs are doing extremely well, uh, but I thought this was a good uh, slide to highlight, to remind not only this board, but mostly the residents in our community. And when we get into the capital part of this presentation, we'll review some of the capital improvements we made. Uh, but we actually have 33 parks covering more than 340 acres. 36 ball fields that we maintain, 29 playgrounds, 19 basketball courts, and obviously you can see all the other things that we have <coughs> there. The pavilions I'll mention. Again, we, we uh, completed most of the pavilions this year. It has been one of the best assets uh, that we've made or best improvements that we've made in our recreation uh, in a number of years. They really... Uh, got a lot of uh, positive feedback from, from the families. <coughs> Building maintenance is up due to pro property and casualty increase and, and personnel cost. Again, we actually have a number of uh, personnel that are under um, the, this particular section. We have our, 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 our night watchmen and, the, and our staff that work on the weekends down at Public Works. That's under this particular budget. Uh, the gentleman who cleans the police department, uh, Mr. Coffey, as well as uh, the, the building on Glendale Road is under this particular section of the budget, as well as our two part-time uh, telephone operators are under this section of the budget as well. Highway, you'll see, is up 11%. Again, majority of that has to do with uh, purchase of vehicles. Uh, and some of it has to do, again, with personnel cost, increase in salaries and increase in health care. Uh, to give you an idea, in uh, highway, we're purchasing a new bucket truck uh, for our electrician, which is coming up on um, replacement. Uh, we have a sign truck, uh, which is a pickup truck that needs to be replaced. That's well over 12 years old. And then we have a small dump body with a plow that's in this budget. And we're also replacing dump bodies, the back of the dump rather than the whole vehicle. It's, it's uh, stainless steel. We're replacing them this year with stainless steel. The bodies actually ride out uh, faster than the, than the chassis actually starts uh, to deteriorate. Uh, so the truck, the actual chassis is still in ru good running condition, but the salt and the cinders and everything else that goes into it starts to eat them up. So we're going with stainless steel this year. Uh, and I think uh, we did stainless steel in 2014 as well. Snow removal. Uh, we had a challenging uh, year uh, in 2013 and in 2014. You will see we only have a slight increase. I know this was uh, uh, not, they're predicting, again, our weather specialists are predicting an, uh, a significant snow event for 2014 into 2015. I hope they're wrong, uh, but I can tell you that we, at this time, we are at 100% capacity. You, you couldn't put another uh, truckload of salt on our yard um, if we wanted to. So we're prepared for anything that comes our way. So as far as materials, we believe that this budget will meet the needs for um, 20, the remaining of 2014 and going into 2015. Uh, street lighting, uh, we've reduced the number of lights in the community uh, by becoming more green as well. We, uh, with our engineering department over the last few years, started to dismantle some unnecessary lights 
as well as when we replace our electrician replaces the lights, we're putting LED lighting in, which is helping with that, that section as well. Sanitation, again, that budget is up, and that is up due to personnel cost. Uh, we have no new staffing. In fact, the majority of the staff that we utilize in sanitation are part-time personnel. Uh, all of our drivers of the trucks are full-timers, but majority of the throwers are part-timers. The Monday yard waste uh, program has been very successful. In fact, right now, we're looking at some months are better than others, but we're looking on an average of saving about $200,000, I'm sorry, $2,000 per month. I wish it was $200,000. But if you look uh, in detail uh, on sanitation or the sanitation budget, our disposal fees a few years ago were $998,000. And that's before the county had their second increase. If we did not make the changes by implementing a curbside yard waste pickup, as well as in trying to enhance and changing, if you remember, we used to do, uh, we didn't have single stream, we had uh, source separation. Um, we had a significant impact. That fee today would be over twelve one million two hundred thousand dollars So we didn't make that. So uh, we're pretty comfortable maintaining the $552,000, most towns our size are paying, paying well more than that. We can still do a whole lot better. What is disappointing to me, and you've I've heard this from me before, our recycling uh, numbers are down for residential, but they're actually consistent with the businesses. Uh, we are continued, we've, we've made some infomercials, trying to get the word out. We've actually given free um, containers out to our residents, um, we actually, I think, gave out 500 containers over the last few months that we were able to receive a minor grant to purchase some of those. But unfortunately, our residents are not complying and uh, we're gonna be making some additional changes in the next few months. One change that we may make, and if the yard waste continues to go in the direction of what we think it will be, it's been a big impact and a big portion of that success for the yard waste is the yard waste that we collect, we bring to our yard. We have an outside contractor that picks that up for free. If we can continue to get that commitment for at least another year, other towns have to pay for that disposal. If we continue to commit to at least another year, we believe that we'll be able to reduce our trash collections sometime mid 2015 to a one day a week but we're continuing to evaluate that. So I'm not prepared to give a commitment at this point, but we feel very comfortably that if residents will improve the recycling and continue with the, the uh, yard waste collections, we'll probably be able to eliminate uh, a one pickup, which will also have uh, a future savings for the community, fuel uh, maintenance, as well as part-time personnel. And you also see, like we do every other year, there is a new truck in the, uh, in the budget. We replace a trash truck every year. Um, and the last but not least, uh, park maintenance. Park maintenance is down, uh, and that speci has specifically has to do with, uh, we've uh, had two employees that we eliminated from the budget, and we're doing more in park maintenance with uh, part-time personnel. This slide here, and I'm uh, try to move it up, I'll try to get a little quicker. This particular slide here is nothing but a, a chart signifying uh, our departments, the highest uh, percentage departments, and it has not changed uh, probably in the last 25 years. Uh, in public safety, the police department will always be the most uh, expensive operating budget within the community. Obviously, they have the majority of the full-time personnel, but if you add up uh, public works and all those departments, they come up, you know, if you add it, park uh, highway, if you add it, uh, sanitation, and some of those others, then the, the next largest is the is um, public works, which uh, doesn't tell us anything. 
what's nice about this is if you can compare our police department with other towns, we are significantly, well, we're, we're below par. I mean, if you look at other towns our size and actually even smaller than us, uh, our police department is under budget compared to the overall. So our police budget in essence is comprised of about 39% of our total operating budget. But if you look at again at the other towns, we're doing a pretty good job. And that has to do with, again, sound management from our, uh, our chief and his administrative staff. I know this generated a lot of controversy over the last year, and uh, that's not what this has to do. But again, it's an educational tool to allow our residents to know where their tax dollars are going. Uh, again, there's not a week that doesn't go by that I speak to a few residents, and as we get into the tax season, those phone calls and emails will increase, and the residents will call me about their concerns about their taxes, and that they pay five, uh, I'll get anywhere, I'm paying you $5,000, I'm paying you $10,000, and I try to do an education. They do not pay the township that. Only 17% of their total tax bill comes back is relating to township services. Again, our school district does a phenomenal job. Uh, they got a lot of uh, compliments this year in the education, so this has nothing to do with us competing with the school district. <coughs> they deserve a lot of praise for all their accomplishments. Um, they have challenges that I hope that I'll never be able to uh, face. Um, meaning getting their, all the kids to school and so on and so forth. So obviously they have a big budget they have to, uh, to pay for all those expenses, but uh, it's important for the residents, again, to know that we, the township, only the comprise of 17% of their total budget, our total taxes that they pay each year. Cost drivers, again, I'll go through these relatively quickly. These are pretty much the same. Uh, every year. Our uniformed um, personnel uh, for wage increases, that has to do with the contracts. Uh, it also has to do with their health insurance. Same thing for uh, non-uniform. Our medical benefits, I'll point out this year, uh, are low. Uh, we only looking, it's actually less than a 3%. And if you remember, I believe it was last month, right, Amy? Last month, we, we signed uh, and we expanded our uh, consortium with uh, not only with the townships but all the school districts as well that had a big impact if we did not do that it probably would have been a seven percent close to a seven percent or even more so act, that actually helped us this year as well our MMO is only up forty two thousand dollars that has to do with a couple things uh, uh, as Amy pointed out to me today our our uh, investments investments are doing better <coughs> Um, most of our investments. It'll be a conversation that we'll have at another time regarding some uh, of the investment um, personnel, but they, they, all this has, has, has impact because of investments, us changing from the defined pension to a defined contribution, uh, and having employees paying more into the pension.